This is Jaden Gould, and you're listening to the Dan Sports News and Friends podcast. This is Bilal Powell, and you're watching Dan Sports News. No, fair, you're watching Dan Sports News. I'm Edwards, and you're watching Dan Sports News. This is Javon Quinn, and you're watching Dan Sports News. This is Will Richardson, and you're watching Dan Sports News. This is Nicole Michelle, and you're listening to the Dan Sports News and Friends podcast. What's up, everybody? It's Clee Wap. You're listening to the Dan Sports News podcast. This is Elliot Cadeau, and you're listening to Dan Sports News. This is Maya Kino, and you're listening to the Dan Sports News and Friends podcast. Congrats on the win. How did it feel to go out there to Germany and get the win? It felt unbelievable, to be honest. It was, it was a little bit scary and daunting because I didn't really know what to expect. It was my first pro fight kind of out of Ireland. But it was pretty exciting because I knew I had a good team around me. I knew I'd done all the work. So it was more exciting than anything, to be honest, so... Was that your first time in Germany? Yeah, that was my first time in in Germany, yeah. And how was it out there? It was actually lovely. It was a really nice country to go to. Like We only saw a little bit of the town that we were in. We didn't get to see much, but it was beautiful. And I'd love to go back and actually like be able to travel it and look around a few places. Now, going into the fight, um, your opponent, she had a record of 8-0, and and it was actually the first opponent that you fought with a winning record. Um, Were you kind of nervous going into the fight or anything like that? You always kind of have nerves going into a fight. It's the normal nerves you do get. But this time I was more confident than I've ever been because we literally left no stone unturned for this fight. And we'd done a lot of research coming into it and we knew exactly how she reacts when she punches. And like we upped her to be a lot bigger than she was in my mind. And getting into the ring, that made the fight a lot easier. So like... I really, really enjoyed it. And the first time I've ever boxed and I enjoyed every single second of it. I absolutely loved it. And I was so proud and confident of myself. Now tell me about the moment, you know, where your opponent's corner, they threw in the towel and you get the victory. What did that moment feel like? At first we didn't really know what, what was happening. We were very confused because the rest of really just, we don't, I don't even remember, to be honest. It's a big, a big blur. But it was like at that moment, I was like, no, I'm not as quick because Niall's my coach. I was like, quick, quick, look. They're not getting back up off the stool. And he goes, what? We're what? And we two of us were so confused. And then I just jumped and I, I started crying then. And it was that moment of everything was just so overwhelming. And I was like, I didn't know what to do. And then I, I saw the belt and I was like, this is real. <laughs> and you got the WBC Youth World Title, WBF World Title, and WIBA World Title. How does it feel to get those three belts in one shot? It was unbelievable. It was just words can't even describe. I worked so hard for this and I know it's a stepping stone for bigger things and I can't wait for what's to come next. And I heard before the fight, you closed off all your social media, Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. Um, What was your decision in doing that? And do you think that worked in the fight? A hundred percent. So we kind of knew they'd underestimate me because... On box rec, it only has that I have one amateur fight on it, whereas I've had over 150 amateur fights, so we knew they wouldn't know about my amateur record, where that's a big plus in what I've achieved. And a lot of experience as well, whereas we knew that she didn't have that much amateur record beforehand. So when they look at it to see a girl that had three professional fights and, like on box rec, said one amateur. So... We were like, this is a great opportunity to close off social media, take down fights, take everything. Cause it's never going to be able to happen again because people know who I am now and they know what I fight like. So we took the opportunity while we could, so no one is no, like no one would know who I was then. So we needed to do the research and then if they, could, if they wanted to, they couldn't find anything. So like Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, everything was gone. I was literally like I was a no fighter at all. And I found that it did work because... Like I said, there was nothing on me, so I was like a ghost. <laughs> and you're the youngest world champion in the world. You're 20 years old. The youngest in the men's is Devin Haney at 21. How does it feel to be the youngest world champion right now? It's crazy. It's Irish female professional as well. And the second youngest professional in Ireland is Katie Taylor, and she's 36. So, like, there's a big age gap there as well. It's just, it's crazy, but hopefully I get to show that there is a chance for us at this age because when you think of females in the professional game you think of them being a lot older whereas I kind of prove to everyone that you can achieve these things at a young age and I'm in my prime so there's only going to be bigger things to come and bigger titles to get so 
Now, how is training and preparation for the fight? Um, we're, I'm in America and we're still in COVID. How is things out there with COVID? Um, how is training and preparation? Yeah, so with COVID over here, if you're a professional or elite athlete, you can still train, which, thank God, I was, I'm allowed to train. So in the first kind of, we had one big lockdown and the restriction, I was wasn't allowed outside five kilometers of my house, whereas my gym was like 20 kilometers away. So I was lucky enough that my brother is a professional boxer and my dad is a, like, he's a coach as well. So I was lucky to have them here with me. So we still kept the work up kept getting the miles in, running. And then when I, the restrictions were lifted and I was allowed back in the gym, I left no stone unturned. I was doing everything I could. I was hitting new PBs every single day of the week, to be honest. And it wasn't just for training. Like, I had my recovery on point two. So, like, I was doing flotation tanks. I was doing ice baths. I was getting massages. I literally had done everything I could for this fight. And I do for every fight I get. How did you first get started in boxing and why did you choose boxing as the sport that you wanted to do? So when I first started boxing, I was six years old and my two brothers and my dad actually boxed at the time, amateur. And I was like, oh, I want to be like them. I want to be like my brothers and I want to fight. But of course, a small six-year-old girl, like boxing wasn't big in Ireland then. And my dad was like, no, you're not allowed to fight. Little girls aren't allowed to box. And so I went above him to the main guy of the club at the time named Tom McDermott. And he was like, yeah, Caitlin, come on, just jump in and do some training. And I literally, I haven't looked back since. And then, since then, my dad actually opened up a club in my town where I am now. And we have one of the best female amateur clubs in Ireland. So it just goes to show if I didn't start boxing then, we wouldn't have this big club now. And it shows that one person can make such a big pathway for other people. So, Who were some of the boxers that you looked up to then growing up and stuff like that? Yeah, so of course there's Katie Taylor. I think every little girl looks up to Katie Taylor. But also um, Carl Frampton. I've always looked up to Carl Frampton. I've always watched his style of fighting. I love how he fights and just the way he gets into a brawl where he's smart about it as well. But So I love Carl. Now tell me a little bit about your amateur career. I know you won a bronze medal. Um, what was your amateur record and what were some of your accomplishments? So my amateur record was 150 fights with 130 wins. And I've had a good few. I've traveled all around the world for boxing, for amateur. And I've absolutely loved representing Team Ireland. So I was my first big kind of medal I won was in the European Championships in Hungary in 2015, I think it was. And that was amazing. And then... Of course, I was lucky enough to go to India in 2017, and I won a bronze in the world. And actually, I fought um, a girl from the USA as well. So it was good to share the ring with some amazing fighters as well. Now, your brother, like you said, is also a pro boxer. How is it just having someone else in the family who understands the sport that you're in and who's also a pro? Yeah, it's, it's really good because when things get tough, because professional boxing is not easy. It is really, really hard. And some people think, oh, it's glitz and glam and you get loads of money when it's really, really not. So under, like him understanding and knowing what it's like to go through, like the selling tickets, training hard, cutting weight and things like that, it really, really helps because he's been professional and he, he turned 18, he turned professional and he actually turned over with Gleason's gym in New York. So he spent most of his years in New York fighting. So he has that little bit more experience as well because uh, American fighting is a lot different from the European style. And I'm lucky enough, I kind of got a few tips and tricks and like him knowing Heather Hardy as well. Like I've been in contact with Heather and it's just unbelievable being able to have him and then all those people behind him as well. Would you ever want to have a pro fight in America? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I'd love to. Now you talk about Katie Taylor. Um, Obviously she's you know, top five, probably pound for pound, one of the greatest women's boxers out right now. How big of a star is Katie Taylor out there in Ireland? Like everyone in Ireland, even people that don't know boxing know who Katie Taylor is. And I think that kind of says it as it is. So if you go down the street and you're like, do you know Katie Taylor? They're like, oh yeah. But everyone literally knows her. She's just, she's done so much for the sport. And like, she, I'm, I'm grateful for her because if it wasn't for her, female boxing wouldn't be as big in Ireland. And thank God it is, but she is, she's pretty amazing, and we all know she is. And we also know Conor McGregor, even though he's in MMA, he did have one 
um, boxing fight, how big of a celebrity and star is Conor McGregor out there in Ireland? Conor McGregor is pretty big too. There, he's a bit controversial because some people love him, some people hate him, but there's no such thing as bad, bad publicity. So everyone still talks about him too. But he is a great fighter and I'd like to see him fight again soon. So. What were your thoughts on his fight with Floyd Mayweather? And did you realistically think that Conor McGregor had a good shot at winning? No. <laughs> There's a big, big difference between like MMA and boxing, and not many people really understand that. So like you have a lot more free will in MMA. Like Obviously, you can take them down, you can kick, you can do whatever you want in it. Whereas boxing, you're restricted to punching, head movement, and trying to be more slicker and not get caught as much. But Mayweather is just different level altogether, and it was it was a good fight for the publicity and money and things like that. But for boxing side of things, it was just madness. Now we talk about you being so young, just twenty years old. Why did you decide to turn pro and not continue the fight to try and get to the Olympics? So when I was younger, like when I started boxing first, everyone was like, "You have to stay amateur." No one really knew it was professional, especially females in professional. But they're always like, oh, you're staying amateur, you're going to the Olympics. But I'm a little stubborn and I don't like being told what to do. So I started to think for myself and I was like, there's actually another route where I can love what I'm doing a lot more. And then I just started to dislike the sport. I was going through a bad time when I was in school and things like that. And I decided that I needed to change something. So I ended up thinking, I sat down with my parents and they're like, you're not going professional. They're like, no chance. So I actually, I signed my professional papers and license and I'd done that without them knowing. And then, of course, when my license came back and said I was accepted, I was like, yeah, I kind of, I have a fight coming up. And they're like, oh, no. So it was the best decision I ever made because I started to dislike sport, which that's not good because it was my whole life, it was my passion. So I just made that little change that I needed and I found the love again. And they do say a happy fighter is a dangerous fighter. How would you describe your boxing style? I like to fight. <laughs> I like being in close fighting, but the thing is, I can change my style. So I can be in close, I can be out far away, I can move, and not many people get to see that when I'm fighting. So you never really know what to expect from me, which you don't get that from much fighters. But a lot of fighters, when they get in the ring, you know exactly, you can predict what they do. Whereas I'm unpredictable, I can come in with anything. So it's really hard to put one name onto it. <laughs> I know soccer, well, football is a big sport also out there in Ireland. I know Robbie Keane, a famous soccer player from Ireland, he played here in America in Los Angeles. Um, did you try soccer when you were younger or did you play any other sports growing up? I think I tried nearly every sport there was. <laughs> I just never really stuck at them. I either kept getting injured or like that's the crazy thing. So I done basketball, Gaelic, soccer. I even done badminton and I still got injured at every single sport I tried except for boxing. Boxing is the only sport I've never got actually injured with, which is crazy. You normally think, oh, you're going to get hurt when you do fighting. But no, it was every other sport. Well, I never really stuck anything. I even tried like Irish dancing. I've done hip hop. I've done everything you can think of. I've tried and I never could stick at it or I just got bored too easily. Whereas boxing, I ended up sticking with, thank God. <laughs> now, do you have anything in the works for your next fight uh, where you will be defending your belt? Yeah, so in my contracts, I have to defend them within six months. So we're waiting, and it, it could be against Jessica Shatko again. We're just waiting to hear. So hopefully I get a fight before Christmas just to keep me busy. And then the day they say they want a rematch or anyone that wants to fight me, I'll be ready because I've stayed in the gym, and I just it's my passion. I love it, so I'll be ready for any fight. So. so do you think you'll have another fight this year, or will it be sometime next year? I'd like to hope I have another fight this year. My plan is to get out before Christmas, definitely. So, Who are some of your favorite fighters on the male side and in the women's besides, you know, Katie Taylor and stuff like that? Yeah, I, do, I like to watch a little bit of boxing. Like, again, I like to watch Carl Frampton, of course. I, I like watching Heather Hardy and Katie Taylor and uh, some of the really good fighters. I like to watch Canelo as well because he's a very good fighter and technical. But there is Terry Harper is a good up-and-coming fighter from the UK and the likes of Shannon Courtney and there's a good few up and coming fighters coming like females from the UK and it's pretty exciting to see the female game get even bigger than the male now. We're actually finally getting the opportunity. Like there's a good card on this weekend, Katie Taylor's card and like three big fights are females. 
So it's really, really great to see us actually getting this opportunity that we deserve. Yeah, Katie Taylor fights this weekend. Um, what's your prediction for that fight? Yeah. Um, I have to stay true with my Irish. I think it'll go the distance, but I think Katie will win out. And does Terry Harper get a win this weekend as well? Yeah, I reckon she will. It'll be a good, nice, tough fight for her. It'll be a good one, but I reckon she'll put it out, yeah. I don't know if you watch men's boxing a lot, but there's a big fight between Terence Crawford and Kel Brook. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with those fighters, but what do you think of that fight and who wins that one? That's actually that's a really hard one to predict. Like they're both, if you think of it, they're both really, really good technical fighters. It takes one lucky shot, to be honest. So that's a hard one to predict, but I'm excited for that one actually. Did you see Gervonta Tank Davis his knockout against Leo Santa Cruz? What did you think of that? That was that was an unbelievable punch. It was the way he let, like leaned over onto him and used his power. It was just unbelievable. It was it was like one of those lucky shots that you need in fights like that because that was a good great fight. Uh, I I wouldn't like to be hit by it anyways. <laughs> now, how is it watching those fights that are big in America? Like, is it? I know you guys are in a different time zone, so is it like early in the morning for you guys? And do you actually watch them live? Yeah, so you try to watch them live. See, I'm really bad in the series. I'm like an old woman. As soon as they hit 8 o'clock here, I'm normally asleep. But yeah, try to stay up and watch them because it's hard to miss them. They're just so exciting and you want to watch them live so you know. But sometimes if I fall asleep and don't get a chance to watch them, I'll have them recorded and I'll watch them straight away as soon as I wake back up. But... Yeah, because they're normally really, really early in the morning. <laughs> of course, yeah. Can you give me your pound for pound top five boxers and women's in your opinion? Kate Taylor, Clarissa Shields, me, <laughs> Terry Harper, she be in there. That's a really hard one now. The Serrano sisters, I'd actually rate them very good. The two of them are brilliant. And I'd like to put Heather Hardy in there because she doesn't get the recognition she deserves. Of course, yeah. Heather Hardy is really good. She had a great fight against... Amanda Serrano, I think it was last year. That was a good one. She really doesn't get the recognition that she deserves. Like, she's a really, really good fighter, and not many people know about her, whereas she deserves to be as big as the likes of Kate Taylor and things like that. Now, can you give me your top five pound for pound in men's boxing, in your opinion? Any years or anything like that? or Well, current, current. Recent. Recent, like the current active yeah. fighters. So, Canelo, Anthony Joshua, Gervonta Davis. There's so many names. It's so hard to pick, though, isn't it? Like, you have that many that it's so hard to rank them. Yeah, no. There's there's like 15 in my head that you want to put in the top five. <laughs> Maybe like uh, Terrence Crawford or Tyson Fury. Yeah, no. Tyson Fury, uh, he'd be number one in mine, to be honest. Tyson Fury's great. Like, he's fought so many battles outside the ring as well. And he deserves everything that he gets. So, he's unbelievable. He's actually a big, big inspiration for me. So, uh, he actually got me out of a few big like some dark places that I've been in mentally and listening to his story really pulls you out so yeah was there any pro fighters that you've met throughout your career who have like given you encouraging words or anything like that so there's another female professional in Ireland called Christine McMahon and I met her about six or seven years ago up in the national stadium where all the like amateur boxing happens and she actually just won her her world title fight and she had her belt with her and I took a photo with the belt and that day I said to her that I'm going to win one of these soon and the word, she just gave me that little inspirational chat that I think every girl needs to hear from another female professional and she's like you will if you stick to it and if you keep working hard then you will and it's really nice to hear those words from her and I've heard like I've spoke to Heather Hardy a few times and she always just tells me to keep going that it will get tough but no matter what, keep working hard and keep going. So I'm grateful for both of those. Have you met Katie Taylor yet or not yet? Yeah, I've actually met Katie Taylor a few times. She's such such a nice person. She's lovely. And she, no matter who, like where she's going or what she's doing, she will stop and have a chat with a fan and she'll try and take photos. And that's unbelievable. Your nickname is The Smiling Assassin. How did you get that nickname? So... <laughs> Actually, so when I was younger, like all I do is smile. Like all my photos, even when I'm in the ring, I'm smiling and laughing and joking. And so when I was younger, my uncle, so my uncle's currently living in Australia, and he came over for a holiday, and he goes, "Do you know what? I'm going to call you a smiling assassin because all you do is smile and laugh, and you beat the out of people." 
<laughs> so ever since then it's stuck. So I've actually been called it since I was about seven years of age. And I think it just fits me perfectly. Appreciate you taking some time to do this interview and good luck with your next fight. Thank you very much, man. I really appreciate it. Any time at all.